Good evening everybody, uh, this is Ranty here and I'm going to have to record this as a pre-record. Uh, the time now is 20 past 7, Ball Busters goes live in around about 40 minutes time. Um, but essentially I'm not going to be around to do the presentation, however, I am going to actually put this presentation together right now and record it and hopefully you'll be seeing this right now live with me. So, without further ado, the presentation and it's all to do with this. The Birmingham Telecom BT Tower in Birmingham. Now then, massive, massive, massive thank you out. Thank bleh, bleh, bleh. Shout out to Level Earth Observer who actually uh, found this absolute gem. An absolute gem. Now, if there's, you know, if let's everyone go over here and subscribe. He has 1.7k subscribers. He's always rooting around and sniffing some juicy stuff out. So it's absolutely in everybody's interest to go over and support the channel because obviously he wants to show what he's found. You can be the first guys to actually see this. And I highly, highly recommend going over, subscribing, and seeing all the other good stuff that he has on his channel too. So Level Earth Observer. Anyway. So within the past week he's put this video out about the, the BT Tower in Birmingham and it's golden, absolutely golden. I mean it's it's more than golden, it's a slam dunk. Um, so back in the 1960s um, this BT Tower, I'll bring it up here, BT Tower in Birmingham was built. I think it was uh, actually first started operations in, I think it was about 1966. Uh, or maybe even 1967, but essentially it was before the moon landings, let's just put it that way, hint, hint, and in brackets, the moon landings. Anyway, BT Tower Birmingham. Um, here's this big eyesore over here, I'll just click this image so that you can see it. Quite a big building, as you can see it's got these towers at the top. Uh, obviously you've got your staircases going up, you've got all the antennas and everything like that, the dishes um, at the top up here. And there's a reason that they built it this high. They built it this high, let me just zoom in. They built it this high, obviously, so they could communicate with other towers. Now, in order to communicate back in the 60s, they used to use uh, microwave radio transmissions. So they would be what was the, the form of communication. So this tower could handle things like uh, television and telephone calls, things like that. So in order to transmit between this tower and a, another tower, let's say this tower over here in London, let's show you what this one looks like. So in order for these to communicate with these dishes etc all around, they needed a direct line of sight. Simple as that. Because the, uh, the form of communication that they had required a direct line of sight. Um, it's not like using the curvature calculator where they include this 76R nonsense. Um, essentially, the, the waves that they were using had to have a direct line of sight. Now, I'm going to show you this lady here. Her name's Molly McKenzie, and I'll give you a little rundown about who she is and what she's done. So if we go over to her LinkedIn page, this is Molly McKenzie, and she's a ch chartered civil engineer from Nottingham in the UK. Uh, currently, her position is regional director for the Institute of Civil Engineers from July 2015 to December 2018, three years, six months, East Midlands and West Midlands. If we go down to her education, you can see that she has a Master of Engineering civil engineering in 1998 2003 from the university of bristol so she is highly highly qualified and when she released this video over here and i'll show you in a minute on the ice um, dot website we will see what she has to say about this tower in birmingham so 2015 to 2018 Regional Director Institute of Civil Engineers East Midlands and West Midlands. Now 
if we go over to the ice.org.uk, which is uh, for the civil engineers, what you're going to do is you're going to listen to what she has to say um, about this tower in the background. So obviously this is an, uh, a video that you can watch on YouTube, you could search it out or you could go to this site here and look it up. Uh, but essentially she'll be talking about this tower, let's listen to what she's got to say. Before the introduction of the fibre network, telecom towers across the country formed the backbone of British communications. This tower was no different, playing a key role in the transmission of television programmes in Britain and around the world. When it was built, the tower's height was key to its success, avoiding the surrounding buildings to allow direct line of sight of radio waves to London and other towers across the UK. So essentially she just said exactly what I just said before. Let me just re rewind it a tad so that you can listen to that again. Just listen to how she phrases this actual structure. The backbone of British communications. This tower was no different, playing a key role in the transmission of television programmes in Britain and around the world. When it was built, the tower's height was key to its success, avoiding the surrounding buildings to allow direct line of sight of radio waves to London and other towers across the UK. One last time. When it was built, the tower's height was key to its success, avoiding the surrounding buildings to allow direct line of sight of radio waves to London and other towers across the UK. Cool. So, there we have it from the horse's mouth. This lady who has a, a master's degree in civil engineering and is also the, well, was the regional director of the East Midlands and West Midlands when she did this video telling you that the Birmingham Tower had a direct line of sight with the London Tower. That's what she told you, that's what she said. And there's a reason that these buildings were built so big, let's we'll take a look at them, these ugly structures. They were built this big for the exact reason that she's just said. She needed, they needed direct line of sight to communicate with each other. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Uh, we're gonna go to two minutes and 40 and listen to what she says here. Force of it swaying the structure. A stable platform is necessary so that the microwave dishes mounted on the side of the structure keep that line of sight with the remote transmitter they are communicating with. And one last time. So we hear that again. A stable platform is necessary so that the microwave dishes mounted on the side of the structure keep that line of sight with the remote transmitter they are communicating with. Okie dokie then. So she's doubling down. They have direct line of sight with each other. Right. Let's have a look at these buildings. So I've actually already plotted them on uh, the the one in Birmingham and the one in London. Uh, if you want me to scroll in just so that I can show you this, I really don't mind, just bear with me. So there's the BT Tower in Birmingham, you can see it here uh, on Google Earth. And if we scroll over to London down here, uh, we have the BT Tower of London. So let me just show you this too. and here it is. Right, so if we do a line measurement on this, uh, we're going to go to properties, and let me drag that across so that you guys can see this, and we'll go to the measurements. It's 100 miles. It's actually 100.5 miles, but Google Earth just says 100, so I'm not too fussed about the 0.5, but just for absolute clarity, it is 100.5. Anyway, uh, okay on that, let's have a look at the elevation profile. So from the Birmingham BT Tower here, uh, we're looking around about 128 metres above sea level. That would be the floor, so the floor would be 128 metres above sea level. And then obviously you've got all this terrain up and down, you've got quite a, a steep hill here which goes up to 167, 167 metres. 
and then obviously all the way down here and then the BT Tower in London is way down here so just some 28 meters above sea level so it's quite a way lower than these build it these um, mountains and stuff that are around in this location here well what I've done is let's go back to the BT Tower of Birmingham and let's go to its properties and see how big it actually is so the BT Tower in Birmingham is to the roof 152 meters if we go to the BT Tower uh, in London uh, to the basically the top of the antenna is 191 meters so we've got all the details that we need here we've got the heights of the buildings we've got the heights above sea level and we have the terrain in between well I've already prepared this so that you guys can have a little look and what I've done is I've scaled the BT Tower in Birmingham and I've scaled the BT Tower in London to their relative heights in relation to this graph so 152 meters and 191 meters and I've placed them on the floor where they would be and as you can see if we get the the line curve out, the line measure out let's do it in the color it doesn't really matter uh, and obviously there's where the this dishes are there there's where the dishes are here oh, oh look at that dish to dish and it really is it's it's close it's close with this this building here this um hill here but they just clear it they just clear it now if we go back to that molly mckenzie in her video she actually states that they actually wanted to build this tower taller because, but they were refused permission because of the planes that were flying in the vicinity and they were worried that the planes might strike them so what they needed to do being engineers was they needed to work out the absolute minimum height needed to clear a direct line of sight between London and Birmingham and that's what they did and that's why they were able to come out with a measurement of 152 meters so what we have here is a direct line of sight between London the problem is this is on a flat graph this is a flat graph this isn't taking into account any curvature of the earth now let's have a look at the curvature calculator we're going to put in well, let me just reduce that back to 100 because I'm not going to argue over half a mile um, distance in miles, 100 miles, the viewer height in feet is 918, let's just double check that with uh, meters, 280. Now 280 we get that value because the height above sea level is 128 and the building itself, the structure to the top is 152. So that's 280 meters. So if you're on the top of the building, 280 meters above sea level, and you're trying to look at and you're trying to look at Birmingham, um, sorry, if you're trying to look at London, um, which has a height of 191 meters plus 37 above sea level, which would be 228. The problem is, the problem is the drop the problem is the drop because we are talking about line of sight we're not talking about an observation we're talking about pure line of sight so the geometric drop using the geometry of the earth the geometric drop is two kilometers two kilometers drop that's how much the ground has dropped if you believe in a sphere let's go down to the little ball here this part of the sphere the drop between point a and point b this drop is two kilometers the problem being is that the tower at london sits just 228 meters high so how are they having a direct line of sight? Let's go back to this. How have they got a direct line of sight between Birmingham and London if there's a two kilometer geometric drop 
physical blockage between this building, which would be some two kilometers down, 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 behind these hills. How have they got a direct line of sight? They cannot have direct line of sight on a ball. That is an absolute fact. They cannot have direct line of sight on a ball. They can only have direct line of sight on a flat plane, pure and simple. And as you can see, it's just high enough to get over this hill, just high enough for those dishes to communicate with each other. And that was the bare minimum that they needed back in the 1960s. Now these civil engineers back then, they didn't need to account for earth curve. They weren't thinking that some 50 years down the line, this earth curve calculator and um, flat versus globe was going to explode onto the internet. They're engineers. That's all they are. They're engineers. They have a problem. They figure it out. And it works. And it only works on a flat plane. It cannot work on a globe. This would not have worked. If they had to build it for direct line of sight on a globe, this building over here, this Birmingham building, would have to be over two kilometers high to have direct line of sight with London. Now this is the most conclusive proof you will are likely to come across ever. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, this destroys the globe argument completely. Absolutely. This is probably, the, like I say, as I said it earlier on, this will be the best flat earth proof that you're going to see most likely on this channel all year. And let me remind you guys, I really want you to go over and sub to Level Earth Observer, who brought this to the attention of everybody. And it's been a pleasure showing this to you guys because, I mean, this is undeniable. This isn't an observation. This is absolute, concrete, line of sight, told to you by the engineer over here, Molly McKenzie, who has a master's degree, master's in civil engineering, and at the time was the regional director of the Institute of Civil Engineers in the location. And he's telling you, way back here, let's go back, let's just listen one last time. Let's just listen one last time. Telecom Tower. Before the introduction of the fibre network, telecom towers across the country formed the backbone of British communications. This tower was no different, playing a key role in the transmission of television programmes in Britain and around the world. When it was built, the tower's height was key to its success, avoiding the surrounding buildings to allow direct line of sight of radio waves to London and other towers across the UK. The country formed the backbone of British communications. This tower was no different, playing a key role in the transmission of television programmes in Britain and around the world. When it was built, the tower's height was key to its success, avoiding the surrounding buildings to allow direct line of sight of radio waves to London and other towers across the UK. And I think that will just about do it. So thank you very much, guys. Um, that's how you do a presentation. <laughs> and um, I think this one's just an absolute slam dunk. So guys crack on i'm sorry i won't be here to answer any questions but i'm going to send this video to you right now and i'll see you in the next one